Hey guys, Haley here today, and um, it is time again for my monthly anime figure and anime merch haul video. Um, I had a lot of stuff come in this month that has been on a ship, so I've had to ship a lot of stuff via sea mail because it's a lot cheaper and a lot more affordable, and so that takes like three months, and a lot of that has just rolled in from kind of February when I shipped it. So very exciting. Without further ado, let's get into all the things I got. As usual, I'll start with a few of the art and kind of enamel pins that I picked up. So first off, I have these two Floral Magical Girl enamel pins. This is by Puffyfish and I've got the Madoka and Ultimate Madoka pins. These are so cute and I love the little simplistic style. Next up, I went completely ham um, on enamel pins by this person called Aya Hoshi. Um, their stuff is insanely cute, so I went and picked up like way too much. The pin that started it all is this one. This is actually a collaboration pin and it's so elaborate. I love it. Then I picked up this trio of summer fresh enamel pins. I love all the little fruits on these ones. Then I also went with the trio of Sakura Matcha pins. I couldn't resist, they look so sweet. Then I've got these two little blossom pins, they're so cute. And last but not least, I got a Shroomies enamel pin. It's like a cat mushroom. Ugh. All of those are super super cute and I recommend if you like cute enamel pins to check out their stuff that they sell because there's a lot more that I could have got. <laughs> I'm sure you will find something you like. Next, let's move on to anime merch goodies. I kind of threw everything into this basket, so I'll just go through everything. First up, I have some clear files. I have this Chizuru one from Rent a Girlfriend, definitely best girl. This super cool Hatsune Miku one. This adorable Eurocamp one. And this snappy one as well. I love that these are matching like pinks and blues. Next up, I have a new Rilakkuma plushie to join my Rilakkuma army. This is actually secondhand from someone in my city. This is the Rilakkuma La France line. I think it's pretty old, but um, I guess it's French themed. He's got a little hat, a little shawl moment, and a little strawberry bag. So he's adorable. I love him. You can never have too many Kuma plushies, right? I have a bunch more Sanex stuff. This is all of Chiaroi Kaguma. I actually never said that one out loud, but it's the dark brown bear that is an actual bear, no zipper. I've got this little headphones clip, a little notebook. I try not to buy too many notebooks because I buy them at a faster rate than I use them, but uh, I saw the designs in this one and I couldn't say no. And the super, super adorable letter set as well. I got more of these. I think I have all six of the designs now, but this is the Racing Miku 2020 Big Can Badge. So I got the kind of Sakura design variant. And I also got the Super Sonica Racing Miku variant where her groups look huge. <laughs> Next, I got this little Rin badge. I think this was literally like 50 yen. Yay, more cos for pinch straps. I have a Rin and Sakura pinch straps. The art style of these ones are a little weird. They kind of look like, I don't know, like, you know, the big inflatable things that float like in a parade. That's what they look like. And finally, I'm very excited for these two. These are the cos for pinch straps of Kaguya and Chika and they look so cute. I think they nailed the um, the design of these ones. Next up we have a scale and this is a scale that I have wanted for like a super long time. I saw it on pre-owned for a pretty good price so I pulled the trigger. I definitely wasn't planning to get it but it is the uh, Katori Minami Alta one seventh and this is the white day version this was pre-owned from amiyami for about twelve thousand yen uh, and that's much lower than retail she retailed for fifteen thousand yen i think that's because love live just isn't as popular now as it was kind of 
you know, five years ago. I was pretty into Love Live. Um, I did a Maki cosplay and I definitely like obsessed over the figures. I couldn't afford to buy any then. And this one was very high up on my wish list of figures that I wanted. This is just such a stunning figure. And it's also by Ulta. Like back then I didn't really know what it meant that it was by Ulta, but now I'm like expecting this to look beautiful and stunning. So let's open this. Oh my god, I love this figure so much more than I thought I would. The idol outfit is so stunning. It is very angelic with all the kind of translucent soft purple colors. And I love the little specks of glitter that's baked into the material. I've not really seen that done too much with figures. The gold highlights on all of the flowers and her outfit really pop as well. I think the pose is a little bit boring, but I don't really have many kneeling figures, so it it's nice to have one and to have some variety in my shelves and collection. I also think the base suits the figure really nicely. It's a super simple transparent to blue gradient, um, but it actually complements the figure really, really nicely. This is an amazing figure. Um, honestly, like the idol Asna, I love her a lot more than I thought I would uh, buying an idol figure, but she's stunning. And so hard to fault for 12,000 yen. Like for an altar figure, mm. she's actually one of three in the white day set. Um, and after I've got the Katori, I really want the Hanukkah as well because she looks stunning. Um, although I'm not sure on the Umi, like she's a little bit disappointing. I don't think her white day outfit really translated that nicely into the kneeling figure. Just my opinion, so I'll probably just get two. But yeah, she's super cute. I highly recommend her if you're a Love Life fan, or like an OG Love Life fan. I think they're up to like, what, the third gen. Next up, I have two Nendoroids. I have the Sakura and the Sakura Grail of Makiri version. These are both 5,000 yen and they were both Good Smile Store exclusives, I think. I'm very excited to have uh, not one, but two uh, Sakura Nendoroids. Um, I've been looking to complete the kind of like fate trio of girls of having Saber, Rin and Sakura Nendoroids, but took a long time to get Sakura. And now after watching Spring Song, I was like even more excited for this one, this like crazy bitch Sakura one. <laughs> but first let's start with nice, pretty, can do no wrong uh, Sakura. Sakura looks absolutely adorable. I really like the hair sculpt on the Nendoroid with the little red ribbon. She comes with a standard expression, this super cute smiling expression, and a bit of a sad looking faceplate. I think this Nenrod is officially from the first Heaven's Feel movie where Sakura pretty much just cooks for Shiro and doesn't do much until shit hits the fan. Um, so accessory wise, she just comes with a school bag, a grocery bag, and an apron and a ladle. Nothing too exciting here, but it is all very cute. She does come with some of the um, angry black grail ribbon parts to kind of signal the darkness that is yet to come for her in the rest of this movie trilogy. Which leads us onto the other Sakura and Android, the Grail of Makiri version. This is Sakura's corrupted form where I think she actually looks way cooler. Her Nendoroid's pretty cute, but kind of in a I'll eat you kind of way. I kind of think the dress does look a little bit odd in Nendoroid form though. She comes with a standard expression and this crazy face, which I love and a crying face. Pretty typical. <laughs> Pretty typical for Sakura. She comes with a little uh, grail familiar as well as some of the effects of her very angry ribbon things. They're both pretty standard Nendoroids in that they're both good. Um, I do think they're on the pricey side at 5,000 yen. You don't get a lot of exciting accessories with them but I think that's just like the standard cost of Good Smile company store exclusive Nendoroids, I think. I am happy now to finally have some Sakura representation um, in my kind of fate Nendoroid collection. Next up, we have a scale figure that I kind of regret pre-ordering now, um, and that is the Saber 1 7th Heroic Spirit Formal Dress version by Good Smile Company. 
She cost me 10,000 yen, uh, pre-ordered from Amiyami, which I guess nowadays for a 1 7th figure is actually kind of on the cheap side. Right now she's in the bargain bin. Uh, she's been dropped to 7,700 yen right now on Amiyami. Uh, they have too many of her and she's not selling, I think. I suspect that that's because in a few months the 15th Celebration Dress Trio set is gonna drop and I think most people would pre-order that saber over this one because maybe they're just upstalled to buy the entire set. But I already had her pre-ordered before I pre-ordered the trio and um, I decided not to cancel her. I didn't want Ami Ami to ban me or anything. Let's take a look. Saber does look extremely beautiful and regal in this figure. I think they nailed her face. That's not hard to do considering how many Saber figures Good Smile has made by now. But I can't decide where I sit on the dress. On one hand, it's very, very simple and it could use more colors and details. But on the other hand, it's simple but effective. The sculpting and shading is spot on and the simple white design looks very, very elegant on Saber. The shoulder wrap is actually a felt material and you can take this part off if you want a more scandalous look on the runway. I feel like the 15th celebration dress design is a bit better because it has more details on it, but I feel like Saber herself would rather wear this dress as opposed to that one. I feel like this dress is more uh, befitting of King Arthur. I think she's beautiful and I think she's priced really well. Um, Although I just, I might sell her after I receive the 15th anniversary trio. I don't need, you know, so many formal saver figures, but we'll see. Next up, we have another Nendoroid, and this is Himiko Toga from My Hero Academia. Um, this is an Nendoroid that I've been waiting for for a long time. I actually don't have any other My Hero Nendoroids. Um, I decided not to collect them, but then when I saw this one go up for pre-order, like, I am a sucker for her character design. It's gotta be those eyes and that hair and the expressions. I don't know, but I basically broke my own rule and I pre-ordered her anyway. It's the little cheeks. It's the little blushing cheeks. I don't know. <laughs> I think they absolutely nailed her expression and her hair. I'm in love with her buns and I love all of her face plates. She comes with her standard face plate um, and then one with her mouth open and you can swap out the mouth part to either have her tongue sticking out or not. Um, and she also comes with this kind of sinister smiling expression. I love all of her face plates even though they're all quite similar. They gave this Nendoroid articulated joints, which I wish they didn't because it kind of makes her cardigan look a little weird um, when you see all the joints, but it does make her easier to pose um, in any action scenes. So she comes with all of her special equipment, like her mask and um, a knife, as well as the uh, effect text that comes with all of the other My Hero Nendoroids. But yeah, I think she's so cute. I think they, uh, they nailed her face and her hair. Next up, we have another scale figure. This is an original character design. This is AKA re -tooing. Not sure how you're supposed to say that, but this is based off an original illustration by Neko. Um, that is one of my all time favorite illustrators. So when I saw that they were making a figure of this design, I uh, was immediately very interested and looking to pre-order. This is manufactured by a company I've never heard of before called Magic Mold. Um, and she was around 18,000 yen uh, for a 1 7th, so that is pretty expensive. Um, I decided that I was so in love with the concept of the figure that I pre-ordered her anyway. Um, and it turns out that might have been a mistake. People weren't very happy with her from what I've seen some people say online. Um, so I'm a little, uh, a little worried, but let's see how she is. I do appreciate uh, how small the box is. Like, I feel like they could have put it in a massive square box and they didn't, so good on them for that. What the hell is that? Why is that literally huge? Oh, there's the camera. Why is this base so big? So the main complaint that people had about this figure is with the braid and the hair. 
um, some issues with sculpting and coloring. Some people had really poor paint and mold work on the bangs. Um, kind of ironic given they're called magic mold. <laughs> But some people's pictures are worse than others, so this definitely looks like an issue with quality control. So there are good batches and then there are really bad batches of figures. I think mine looks alright. I think the bangs look fine um, and the painting on the braid is not as bad as I've seen in some other photos. Um, but it is pretty rough up close. Once you step back and take a look at her from a normal viewing distance, uh, it's not really noticeable luckily. The other details on the figure are actually really nice. I think the chair and the scissors are sculpted and painted beautifully. And there's a few really nice details on her outfit as well, on her belt and her socks. But my other big gripe with this figure is the base. I don't know what they were thinking, if they were dreaming or going insane. This base is so big. It does not need to be this big at all. It's gonna take up so much space on any shelf on any detail, it is ridiculous. Overall, on paper, this figure is disappointing. Um, the base is absurdly stupid, um, and the quality is not on par for the price, especially if you're someone who got a particularly bad batch. But despite those things, I still really, really like this figure. Like, I'm still really glad I have her. Um, and she looks amazing to me. I love the way it looks as a whole and like I'm definitely going to keep her and I'm still glad that I pre-ordered her. The 18,000 yen price tag, like she's not going to be worth the 18,000 yen price tag to everyone um, and I don't think she should be but it's like for me I'm kind of okay that I paid that for her. Maybe I just got one where the paint doesn't look too bad, so I'm lucky enough to have this opinion. But I'm gonna have to put like other figures on top of her base if she ever goes on a shelf or in a detail. Um, or I'm just gonna have to like DIY a different base for her because this is ridiculous. Okay, moving on to our last figure. I am so excited for this. It is a bunny figure. Um, on the wholesome side of bunny, you can probably guess who she is. Um, I'm very excited. We have the quarter scale Madoka bunny version by Freeing. Yay! I had this big girl pre-ordered and shipped via sea mail, so I have been waiting for her for months. She was a single shipment figure because her box is huge. I've been waiting months for her. She was 25,000 yen um, on Amiyami. This is on the pricier side of bunnies. I think because she comes with, you know, actual clothes um, that requires sculpting <laughs> as opposed to just a bunny suit. I've seen a few other people unbox this already and I cannot wait. She is amazing. I love that they put um, a baby Madoka into a beautiful flowy dress instead of like your typical bunny suit. Definitely suits her character way more. And the dress looks beautiful. I love the sculpting and all of the shading in the folds. They're actually a really subtle pink. And I love the translucent uh, overlay and the pink ribbon in the back is beautiful. The little pink shoes are also a highlight. They are so cute. And her face is also super, super cute. She looks like she walked straight out of the anime down to the shading of the eyes. I do have to say though, her face seems really, really big. Um, this was actually just really obvious to me when I put her next to one of my other bunnies. So looking at the original anime artwork, I guess they did just have really big heads, but it's really obvious when it's in a figure form. It's not a bad thing, it's just something I noticed and now I can't unsee it. The only other thing I would change about this figure is I wish they made one of her ears droopy. Like, I think that would make this figure like a good 4% more adorable than it is already. Quickly, the base is nothing exciting. It's a very boring clear plastic. Thanks, Frame, for being so predictably boring with your quarter scale bunny bases. <laughs> but apart from that, she is stunning. I'm very excited to finally have her in my collection. 
Um, and I'm really actually excited to see um, Freeing put out more creative bunnies, not just bunny suit bunnies. I know the Menma looks really cute as well. Um, hopefully we see more in the future. All right, guys, that's everything that I had to show you guys this month. It was a big month, but like a lot of these things I shipped three months ago. So it's it's really exciting to see all the C-mail stuff start rolling in now. Um, but yeah, cool. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.